is wearing a hijab essential to Islamic religion? What constitutes essential religious practice? Dear viewers, welcome to BW Legal World Dialogues. I am Krishnendra Joshi, and today we are going to dissect the Karnataka High Court much talked about hijab ban judgment. And to do that, we have with us a very special guest, a senior advocate par excellence, a published author, and a multifaceted personality. We welcome Mr. Vivek Sood to the show. Thank we you. welcome you, sir, to the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here on this platform. Thank you so much for your time and doing this quick fireside chat with us on a hotly debated topic. So my first question to you is, what is your overall view of the judgment? Somewhat restrictive, outright discriminatory, or absolutely progressive? In my view, uh, this judgment of the Karnataka High Court on the hijab controversy is a constitutional gem. It is, right. it is complete in all respects. And it, is, it follows in letter and spirit the principles laid down in the Constitution of India. I don't see any elements of ideology in this judgment. It is a very progressive judgment. It is not discriminatory at all. And if I can say a few words summarizing the quality of the judgment, it upholds uniformity in education in India. In other words, the judgment says that religious attire has no place in the education sector in India. So therefore, I, I reiterate, it's a very progressive judgment and uh, it's, a, it's a constitutional gem and everybody must at least browse through the judgment. It's a very detailed judgment running into about 130 pages. But if uh, you have the time, one should browse through this judgment. But what one wears and what to not wear, uh, should a court be deciding on such matters? Definitely. If the issue concerns constitutional law, then the court has the jurisdiction to decide. Now, now the hijab controversy raises numerous constitutional issues and questions. So that is where the jurisdiction of the high court comes into existence. You know, an, an issue, a constitutional issues were raised before the high court and the high court has delved into the constitutional principles and has decided the issue. In my view, the Karnataka High Court has not traveled beyond its jurisdiction in delivering this judgment. Uh, the, the, the dispute raised constitutional issues which have been adjudicated by the Karnataka High Court. The most fundamental question in this case is, and I would like to know your views on this, is wearing hijab essential to Islam? This question has been addressed extensively and intensively by the Karnataka High Court. And the Karnataka High Court has gone into the Holy Quran. The Karnataka High Court has considered opinions of leading Muslim philosophers who have written on the subject, who have written on hijab, keeping in view the entire literature on hijab, the Karnataka High Court has arrived at the conclusion that wearing the hijab is not an essential religious practice for the Muslim religion, for the Muslim women. And the High Court has traced the history of hijab. Hijab came into existence out of necessity says the High Court. You don't know, there were times when the protection of women needed this veil or needed the headgear of hijab. So keeping in view the Quran and, you know, the religious texts 
and religious literature and the history of hijab, the Karnataka High Court has come to the conclusion that hijab is not an essential religious practice for Muslim women. Because, you know, because uh, the High Court has, has actually referred to literature which speaks of freedom of choice for the Muslim women. And all that the Quran says as per the High Court is that there must be modesty in dressing up. You know, there has to be, there must be decency in dressing up. But hijab has not been found to be an essential religious practice in any way. All right. Moving to the heart of the matter now, could you please briefly explain the what constitutes essential religious practice? Essential religious practices are those practices which form the fundamentals of a religion. In other words, these are the core religious practices of any particular religion. And, you know, the test to determine whether a practice is an essential religious practice or not is like this. If a particular practice, if without that practice, that religion ceases to exist as a religion, or if its essential nature is altered, then that mm -hmm. practice is an essential religious practice. It must, it must be essential to the religion itself. And, and, you know, when the constitution was being drafted, uh, the great B.R. Ambedkar, he had said that religious practices are many, multiple, but every religious practice will not fall within the ambit of a fundamental right. So only those practices which are right. essential in nature for, for calling that religion, that particular religion, as it is, as it is understood. So it is only those core religious practices, you know, which, uh, that are called essential religious practices. So as a follow-up question to this, does ERP suffer from many limitations? Yes. So Article 25 of the Constitution lays down the limitations and, uh, you know, the two limitations that are relevant in the context of the hijab controversy. One limitation is that the state, the government can regulate religious practices for social welfare and reform. Also, the state can regulate religious practices for, uh, you know, for... Uh, uh, for uh, secular activities and then the, the court, the high court has gone ahead and said that even if the practice is, even if the practice is an essential religious practice, still the state can regulate it for bringing about social reform and for the welfare of the people and for secular activities and then further those, those religious practices must be in accordance with the constitutional values, constitutional morality. So even if a practice is an essential religious practice, it can be regulated for bringing social reforms and welfare in the society. And apart from this, it must satisfy the test of constitutional values and morality. Now, I must elaborate a bit on this. Constitutional morality means dignity, for example, egalitarianism in the society. So, you know, so these essential religious practices can be regulated and on, on these grounds which I have just stated, and they must be in accord with essential constitutional values. And this uh, has been picked up by the Karnataka High Court from the famous Shaira Bano judgment, you know, which uh, declared triple talaq right. to be unconstitutional. 